Welcome to us, Sam. Peace be with you and Merry Christmas. I'm here to give a little spiritual update and a Christmas reflection as the days draw near. As you know, I started my chemotherapy and had to pause for a moment because my white blood count wasn't high enough, which gave me an opportunity to recover. And on the 13th of December, I had my second treatment. Uh, all went very well uh, from the two treatments so far. I've lost my hair already, but the other side effects have been manageable, uh, knowing and expecting what they would be. My biopsy came back uh, showing that it was consistent, the tumors in the liver were consistent with pancreatic cancer, the same consistency as before. So uh, there was no mutation of the cancer, which I think in the long run is probably a good thing. So we're going to continue to attack it in the same way, my third treatment will be on the 27th of December, and I will do six treatments, and hopefully we'll have a scan and, and see that the progress is uh, there for us as an answer to the prayers for which we have been offering. So other than that, uh, I am just blessed to be able to prepare for Christmas and to celebrate that after we have celebrated so many great opportunities for the Sacrament of Reconciliation. So the next update I will give most likely, uh, if there's nothing changes, uh, will be when we get closer to the time of the scans or I receive any numbers uh, that I can share and report with you. But I wanted to make this message to you before Christmas. So uh, if you haven't seen me uh, since this summer, uh, I didn't want you to be shocked uh, to see uh, Mr. Baldman, Father Baldman coming into church. But I feel great. So just remember it's in... You know, times like these that God is really asking uh, for us to allow him to, to purify our hearts and to sanctify our souls. Recently, I had a identity theft problem with my computer at work. It was simply a ploy to try to get, get my information by saying that my computer was overrun by uh, someone who was trying to steal my identity and in the process the person who was supposed to be helping me uh, began to ask those personal questions in regards to gain access to my bank accounts and things like that. We've been having trouble with identity theft in regards to people receiving emails uh, from me uh, asking for gift cards uh, then when the people would get the gift cards then the person who was pretending to be me would ask for the codes on the back and and people uh, have been confused in that realm as well so just a reminder I'll never ask you to do anything like that if if we are asking for gift cards it will be through the giving tree and if I ask you for any want or need it will not be through an email uh, it will be a personal ask but this is one of the problems that we're experiencing in our country is identity theft. And when we look at it from that perspective of what I described, we've experienced over 805,000 of identity theft cases that have been reported. And over $8.8 .8 billion have been taken from people who simply believed that the person they were speaking to uh, was the person whose identity was taken. And, and that's a real problem uh, because the consequences of losing our identity uh, in that fashion is a financial one. But I think our country is experiencing even a greater identity theft that is taking place. People have lost the reality of who they are and are trying to identify with something else whether it be political, whether it be uh, sports teams, whether, whether it be by employment or uh, the schools that we go to. We, we try to identify to things that give us credibility and credence. And when we do that, we are pushing ourselves further away from being who we are truly called to be. And the only identity we really need is that for which we call ourselves Christians and this is the reason why Jesus comes into the world he comes into the world as a child to remind us first our identity is 
with our humanness. He comes into the world to redeem us because our identity is a broken nature, a sinful nature. He comes into the world vulnerable as a child to remind us that our identity in this world is very vulnerable, uh, not only to a theft of our identity, but the loss of our souls. And finally, we know Christ Jesus comes into the world to ask us to be his disciples. And there is where our greatest identity comes, in the word Christian. If we can identify ourselves as Christians, then we really get the true spirit of why we celebrate Christ's birth. So that we could say, no matter what other category you may put me in, or you might identify me in another way, or you may even try to rob my Christian identity, it cannot be taken away from me. For that was indelibly planted on my soul. Cancer can be one of the greatest identity thefts that someone experiences. Once you become a cancer patient and you're participating in the journey of cancer, there's always the whisper of that identity. Identity with the disease. This man has cancer. This woman has cancer. And it makes you believe that that's your identity. But when we say to each other, I'm praying for you, I'm supporting you, and this is a part of the journey where our souls are sanctified and our hearts are purified, then the identity is not on the illness. We do not become the illness, but we remain the Christian for whom we are. Can you imagine that through the identity theft of our own souls to cancer? It's called despair. It's called hopelessness. And it's very easy to fall into and that we may even give up on God and therefore forfeit our greatest identity. So my brothers and sisters, you who are walking the journey of cancer with me, uh, for you who are, are widows or for those of you who suffer other illnesses and disabilities, do not allow yourself to be identified with the type of cross that God is asking you to carry, as if it is something that is so horrendous and contrary to life. Because remember, Jesus came into the world vulnerable. He came to save us from our brokenness. And the only way we can do that is walk the cross with him. So Christmas is the time for us to realize that we have one true identity, yes, in Jesus Christ. Perhaps maybe that's the way we should introduce ourselves when someone asks, you know, who we are. We should say, I'm a Christian, and my name that I participate in is Father John. I'm a Christian, and I'm suffering the cross of cancer. I'm a Christian, and I'm a fan of the Steelers, even though they're letting me down. I think it will catch people off guard just as much as the next few days to say every opportunity you have. Merry Christmas and may God bless you. We have to allow people to know. We identify not with the, the, the stores and, and the presents, not even with old Alf on the shelf, but we become like Santa who kneels before the Christ to know that our life, St. Nicholas, is in service to Christ himself. So my dear friends, have a happy, blessed Christmas. Let us put our illnesses and our sadness and our fears and our loneliness aside. Not as a part of what we're experiencing with family and friends in the world, but what you will find and what you will experience as you come to Mass on Christmas, as you kneel before the, the crash, as you call upon the Christ child. Blessed are you, Jesus, who is vulnerable, who became like us, so that we may become like you and have only one identity that no one can steal, the name Christian. So remember, my friends, it's in times like these that Jesus asks us to allow him to purify our hearts and sanctify our souls, to make us saints, so that we may 
share the name Christian eternally in heaven.